Thank you, Doug. Well, you know, uh, I just want to say at the beginning that there are a lot of variations of war, and, uh, and one I think we need to recognize is that we're gathered here on land that, that was taken from the first peoples that lived here for thousands of years, and we, we gather here honoring the treaties and, and the, the obligations that that calls for us to do something about that situation. But, but I, I never like to turn down a chance to talk about uh, why war is a bad idea. I've been doing it for more than 50 years, starting down the road here uh, back in the 1960s, when the United States and other powers decided that it was all right to make decisions on behalf of the people of Vietnam, and we, we called for, for an end to that war. And, and as I was thinking about coming today, I was sadly remembering what a l long river of blood there is in the years since then. And I've just, on this ribbon, I've just tapped on the names of some of the many wars where, where powerful countries have decided for somebody else, for the people of their own countries, where where the decision should be made and what should happen. And it's a very sad story that, that we roll out when we, when we look at that. We're only a few days away from remembering the anniversary of the murder of Gandhi. And Gandhi said, violence is the weapon of weak people. And we need to remind ourselves that there are so many better approaches to living together on this planet than, than the use of violence and the declaration of, of war against people. And we need to renew our commitment to say that we are going to call for some of those other options and not for the choice of war. It was just in the last few days, you probably saw in the news, that for the first time since it was created, the doomsday clock was moved to less than two minutes to midnight, to the, the destruction of, of us on this planet. And it's stupid, you know. The people who profit from war are people we never see, we never connect with. The people who pay the price of war are the poor. And they're the people that are from ethnic minorities. And, and they suffer because of war. War is despicable. And so I want to just, in one minute, remind you of four words that all begin with the letter D, despicable, but war is also destructive, not just in the short term, not just in terms of human life, but in the long term even, agriculture, land that never recovers, industries that are destroyed, cultural treasures, but, of, but primarily the millions of people that not just die, but that may end up with lives of suffering for decades afterwards. So war is destructive. War divides. The very success of war in this world depends on promoting the idea of us and them, of separating us into, into factions and getting us speaking against each other and tying ourselves up with criticism of each other instead of focusing where the real danger and the real enemy is. War, war divides and distracts us. And finally, war deludes us into thinking that just because you're strong, you should be able to have your way. And that's again a, a, a recipe for catastrophe as we try to live together, that the strong should be the ones that that end up on top. And so war is despicable, it's destructive, it divides, it deludes, and we need to make sure that we add our voices today specifically to say no war on Iran. In the bigger term to say we need an end to war. I, I lived for a number of years in Afghanistan, I visited in Iran, and let me tell you something, and we know it because of our friends from the community that are here too, let me tell you something, in Iran, you'll find people just like us. And war on Iran means that children will lose parents. It means that parents will lose children. It means that people who had the chance to contribute to building community through, through their chosen professions, through their life as neighbors, 
through their life and in families will be denied that chance and we must make sure that we keep the focus there war means an end to ordinary people like us it means the end to the lives that they would choose to live if it was up to them and so we have to raise our voices on behalf of those children and those parents so that the voices are coming from all over the planet to say no war on Iran we may not we may not be able to turn the doomsday clock back and that ribbon of, of blood that's flowed out from so many wars but we can make sure that we do all we can to not add one more tag to this this ribbon that I've rolled out today I have a friend in uh, in uh, the urban core downtown in Edmonton a, a man named Dale and he's lived for many years homeless uh, on very very little money um, even in the cold weather last week when I met him he didn't have a decent jacket but you know every time I see him and I say to him how's it going Dale his message to me when we're when we meet there on the street is he says we need world peace <laughs> no matter what else is happening in his daily life and the struggles he's going through his eyes light up and he says we need world peace and so today we do our little part towards that by saying no war on Iran and I proudly add my voice to that message Thank you.